Um, so I, yes, yes. Um, hello, everybody. My name is, uh, it says Timothy Murphy here, but only my mother calls me that. Um, my, my name is Tim Murphy. I'm the new chair of the board. This is my first meeting. Um, it's a real honor to be chair of the board. Uh, and uh, I am frankly uh, driven by making us a better landlord, and that's the reason I'm here. And hopefully we can achieve that. Um, and I know that this is available on the webcast, so uh, thank you uh, and welcome to the thousands of followers of this <laughs> board meeting. Um, so I do want to uh, include our uh, land acknowledgement uh, uh, that we're holding this meeting on the territory, uh, traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the New Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat, uh, and is now home to many diverse First Peoples, the Inuit uh, uh, and Métis as well. And we acknowledge that Toronto is covered uh, by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the New Credit. Uh, we do have a number of new board members on the board, uh, and in particular, well, me, or, uh, only John Campbell, Henry, who are new members. John, uh, as some of you may know, a city councillor, as well as a longtime trustee, uh, brings significant uh, public sector experience and board experience as a member of the TTC, uh, and spent 30 years uh, uh, in the private sector, including focus on... Uh, ensuring uh, that, uh, you know, selling packaged goods, but the fundamental important part of that was uh, client service is a fundamental characteristic of, so he's going to bring that talent and skill to this board and to our efforts on. Adele is uh, an also a new member and has got some serious and substantial financial and uh, commercial real estate credibility, uh, has a long experience in public-private partnership, and our paths actually overlapped in that. Significant board's experience as a chair, uh, members of audit committees of large uh, not-for-profit organizations in education and health care, uh, and is a chartered professional accountant and a chartered accountant, so we are very pleased to have her. Uh, they have been uh, appointed, uh, respectively, Adele as chair of the BIFAC, I'm learning the acronyms, the Building Investment Finance and Audit Committee, and a member of the Investment Advisory Committee. John's a member of Tenant Services and of Governance, and Brian Smith uh, continues as Governance Communications and HR Committee. Thank you to all three for your sacrifice. Um, uh, <laughs> I do want to note, uh, as I'm sure you're well aware, that Tenant's first uh, report uh, was issued yesterday. We have not had a, an opportunity yet to review it in depth as a board. We will at the next meeting, but we are encouraged, obviously, and very supportive of it. I mean, it has um, uh, recommendations very consistent with the Tenants First report and the notion of putting Tenants First, and that is absolutely, um, you know, uh, the reason we uh, are here at this board and are looking to implement, you know, things about focusing on and creating a seniors uh, unit that makes sense about, uh, in, about putting some of the development functions into CreateTO to allow us to focus on our uh, in effort to improve our abilities as a landlord and to focus on that. So, I mean, obviously we'll have to wait and see what City Council does with it, but we are very supportive of and are working in good cooperation with the City. Um, obviously, uh, we are encouraged by the fact it's recommending we continue as a corporation because we think uh, we want to make sure we work in the appropriate fashion with the city to focus on delivering quality services to our tenants uh, and improving the quality of services we provide to tenants. Um, and so, uh, um, but we will obviously continue to work with the city as that proceeds through executive uh, um, council. Um, now, we had, as in the normal course, a confidential uh, session before we started. Um, and uh, I just, I've said this to the board in the confidential session, but one of the things we are going to look at is the balance of items between confidential and public sessions, because I think there are some things we can, uh, uh, we need to address in confidential session. Others, I think we can address in 
open session and we're going to look at that balance to make sure that we do it appropriately because I think there is utility in, in the public seeing the process by which we come to decisions. So that's something we're looking at. And this is my first meeting. We haven't had a chance to do that. So we did the current process under our the way it's been done before, but that is something I as chair am committed to doing. Um, we did uh, we did review uh, the issue around uh, the report of the Auditor General on vacancy uh, and the vacancy issue management. Uh, obviously, it's relatively uh, fresh, still needs to be filed, but we are taking that um, seriously as a board, and so one of the things we did review uh, and conclude in the confidential session is that it was important to enough to us as a board that we're going to appoint a special committee of the board to, re to review vacancy management um, and to look at our response to that uh, report and to how we're going to work with the city to help it improve its efforts at vacancy management and how we can be better at vacancy management working with them and so that's the function of uh, which we'll be meeting in a few short weeks uh, and we're looking to put together the right around that table um, in terms of the auditor the city ourselves and staff etc to be able to give ourselves uh, a, a good uh, understanding of the issue and how best we can move forward on that issue uh, we did endorse a plan for consulting with tenants on uh, the uh, TCH new draft policy for handling tenant complaints. Uh, that's pursuant to our shareholder direction to consult with tenants to ensure it is accessible, transparent, and advocates on behalf of tenants, um, effective complaint handling, and services. Uh, and we want to make sure we're as um, effective as that as possible and also trying to ensure that we are um, effective at, at tracking how good we're at that we are at that so that is a, a, a process we're engaged in uh, we also authorize some additional spending for site servicing at uh, phase three of the region park revitalization uh, as the housing is responsible for constructing some new public roads including sewers water distribution and lighting for the new 12 city blocks uh, and that enables construction work and handover the, to the city by 2022 um, we also discussed in the uh, confidential session uh, the um, provisions of Bill 66, which was passed by the province of Ontario, entitled the Restoring Ontario's Competitiveness or something Act, I think. Um, and, uh, and we had a discussion in the context, as you may know, of the City Council having reviewed and considered the same issue. Uh, and they, the city came to a conclusion uh, that they were going to opt out uh, and uh, going to then study some issues related to, uh, to the uh, applicability of the process to unions belonging to the CLC. Uh, the board concluded that it would follow uh, basically exactly what the city did and that was the result of our consideration of that issue in the confidential session. I think it was done on the basis that um, you know, uh, it's important to pay workers a fair amount in this city. It's important to be able to have, uh, you know, a process that uh, that makes sense. And for the four unions, we have collective bargaining agreements in. It's important to uh, follow the agreements that we've entered into. Um, now, I think that is it for the confidential session, if I'm not mistaken. Apologies, by the way, if I'm my first one, so I'm getting used to the rhythm, so I'm Maybe some jumping around, but I'll get I'll get it right. Is there anything you can do very well? Yeah, yeah, thank you, Councillor. Yeah, so very kind of you. From the vacancy. <laughs> I just want to make sure he didn't miss anything. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. okay. Um, now for the, we'll turn to the public session, um, and I think the first order of business is the consent agenda or do I have something more to do in advance of that? No? So the only thing I would note in relation to uh, the review of the consent agenda, we have a number of individuals who have identified a desire to speak in relation to the matters on the consent agenda. So what I'm going to suggest that we do is that we, when we get to the point where we're going to identify matters to hold on the consent agenda before we do that, we ask those individuals who want to depute on those matters to uh, take the opportunity to make their deputation then. And then when people can decide whether, in light of the deputations, they want to hold things or simply adopt the consent agenda. Okay. 
Is that acceptable to everyone? Okay. Um, so I think just in terms of uh, the public session, uh, Linda Jackson, as chair of the Tenth Service Committee, is going to uh, talk about the tenant engagement system. Uh, I'll uh, detail on that. Um, and then we're going to obviously have the president's report uh, on uh, April and May, and then an update in the progress on the business plan for next year. Uh, we'll do the deputations as suggested. I, I'm told I have to describe the deputations process, which I will, although you're probably more familiar with it than I am. I think the primary point is there are a limit to five minutes. We try and keep them focused on the subject at hand. Uh, and, uh, but we do look forward to what you have to say. Appreciate those who filed some deputations in writing before. Thank you for that. That's much appreciated and very helpful for us and the board. Uh, and look forward to hearing from you. I think the idea is you come forward to, is it this podium? And, uh, yep. and uh, make sure you speak into the microphone so the thousands of people in the web audience can listen to your remarks as well as us here at the board. So thank you. Uh, so with that, I think we'll go to um, the uh, con uh, conflict of interest. To confirm the agenda. Motion to confirm the agenda. We need to, oh, all right. So we need a motion to confirm the agenda. Brian, seconded by Nick. All those in favor, aye. Okay, Thank you. Then, pull for then now I pull for conflict of interest. Are there any conflicts of interest of any of the directors? <coughs> I don't see any. Thank you. And... Sorry, no, no, that's okay. On this issue, it's not a, this is just the people around the table. Thank you. Um, no problem. Um, I'm learning too, it's okay. Um, and then I guess we the whole comic agenda. So for those individuals who have identified a desire to depute in relation to matters on the consent agenda, I'm going to go through those, those matters and identify the folks who've asked to depute on them and if we can ask them to come to the podium and make their deputation. So in relation to item two. So just so, just so we're clear, here's what we're going to do. We're, because we've got a bunch of issues on the consent agenda item as well as the public thing, before we decide what we're going to just approve and before we just, or hold so that we can talk more about, we'd like to hear from you. So for example, if it, you identify in the course of your deputation an issue that we had not considered and therefore we want to then talk about it, um, before we, that we then can do that based on you telling us, hey, I, you need to know about this. So because of that, what we want to your deputation based on that input from you, we can say, oh, geez, we better talk about this item because we hadn't intended to, but based on what you've said, that makes sense. So, the, so that's why we're doing it in this way, if that's okay. So I think what's going to happen is Dara's going to ask you to identify yourself, come forward, we'll hear your deputations, and then based on the results of all of those, we'll decide what more we talk about uh, based on what you've said. So hopefully that's understandable and okay. Dara. So in just to be clear, the consent agenda items are the items on the agenda that begin with the number two. And so for item 2F, we have two deputants. The first deputant, I'll, I'll ask Cheryl Duggan, uh, who indicated that she wanted to depute in relation to this matter. And this is the Office of the Commissioner of Housing and Equity 2018 Work Plan Performance. Cheryl here. Yes, Cheryl, thank you. Please come forward and thank you very much. Testing, 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 testing. Oh my goodness, I put this way the heck out here. Yeah. Okay, there you go. All right, so um, I'm honored to have had Oach invite me out for a little private consultation. Um, I was out there for like an hour and a half. They let me go on and on and on for that long. I don't know what possessed them, but hey, I was happy to do it. <laughs> um, they did have a presentation ready for me. I'm so sorry they didn't really have time to get into that, and I really didn't want to waste their time with that type of material when I knew what was pretty much in it. Um, but I do have, you know, some suggestions for them going forward, which we discussed at the meeting. And um, one of those was they have a... Um, a customer appreciation survey for the tenants that go through their process. And I'm thinking it's really great to see that, but the big concern for me is that it's not describing what TCHC could have done better to prevent them from getting there in the first place. 
So if they, uh, I asked them politely if they could add a TCHC component to that so that we can fact check, so that we can get those services there to the tenants sooner without having to wait on average 15 months or 18 and a half. It's, it's 15 months if you're waiting for accrued interest or, or accrued um, overpayments or 18 and a half from start of, you know, issues. Um, there's also, um, Uh, like the 95% satisfaction rate with their with their tenants that go through their program should be a great big gold star for them and something that TCHC should work toward, especially when it comes to um, preventing evictions. Um, and in the meantime, I'm thinking that if you can wait 15 months on average before you you know decide to red light these files then maybe you should be penalized up to the one year mark to say, well, if you weren't interested in following us up, then maybe, you know, you, like uh, it's our obligation, yes, to pay our rent. It's your obligation to follow up if we're not paying our rent. You're not doing that. You're not doing your job. So maybe we just take that first year out of the running or maybe what we do is just wait until you guys turn around and decide to send us the first notice and the, and the, and the arrears will start from that point. Because it, to me, it doesn't make sense that people are going so long, like three thousand six hundred and sixty some odd dollars, or six hundred, three thousand six hundred something. That's an average after the fifteen months, and I'm thinking there's no way I'm on a thousand dollars a month income, and there's no way in God's green earth that I could ever pay that back. And when you have agreements that are going for five to ten years and you're only allowing so many times for them to come back to Oach before you send them to tribunal even if they have legitimate circumstances where they couldn't pay it that's not you know that that's not being very tenant centric if you ask me anyways that's it for now thank you thank you very much is there anyone else yep. so in relation to this item Catherine Wilkinson had also indicated she wanted to diffuse it's Catherine Wilkinson. Yeah, there we go. Good morning, uh, board members, stakeholders, tenants, guests. Uh, welcome uh, to Tim, John, and Adele uh, for uh, agreeing to uh, have the privilege of sitting on this board. Uh, we've been waiting for you, and we're glad you're here. I also want to thank you very much, Tim, because you did something from the get-go that tenants will be very impressed with. You actually did put tenants first, and you gave us five minutes, which is actually what the deputation policy for stakeholders is typically supposed to be. We're pretty much used to being told three minutes and sit down, so thanks for the five minutes, but I'm already prepared to only take three minutes of your time. <laughs> so please don't time me. You're timing me already, aren't you? <laughs> okay, you'll get the hang of it. Uh, anyhow, so I, I too wanted to talk about the uh, OACH 2018 work plan. The 2018 work plan indicates that OACH has continued to provide TCH with audit results, recommendations, uh, trends and systemic issues. Yet we continue to see some of the same issues arising over and over again, such as the need to make personal contact with tenants and sending out arrears letters in a timely manner. Why is that still going on? It is rather surprising within this environment that TCH did not identify the need for additional training provided by OCH for their frontline staff. OCH was able to make personal contact with almost every single tenant that was referred to them. Tenants' willingness to work with OCH may be due in part to the fact that OCH is actually operated independent of Toronto Community Housing. OCH recouped $167,000 for Toronto Community Housing in arrears. 369 households were not evicted, resulting in eviction avoidance costs of 1.8 million for Toronto Community Housing. Eviction cost is approximately 5,000 per household. OCH connected 352 families to external agencies for support, and there was much Toronto Community Housing can learn from these best practices. OCH was not intended to audit TCH files in perpetuity. 
if TCH had implemented the recommendations of OCH for the past five years, OCH would be out of business. With arrears at an all-time high of 14.7 million, the services of OCH are needed now more than ever. At what point will this board compel management to adhere to their own arrears collection process and acknowledge their staff may actually benefit from additional training provided by OCH? Either we are committed to reducing arrears for this corporation, improving the quality of life for our seniors and vulnerable tenants at risk of losing their housing, or we are not. Which is it? Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. So, Catherine, don't go away. Uh, because on item on item 2G, I think you've also wanted to diffuse. <laughs> Can I ask her a question? No question. Yeah, John. So, uh, Hang, on, John. Day Hang on, John. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can we ask questions about that separate station first? If we have I'm going to keep you on unless it goes. I'm sorry. No pressure. Board members are permitted to ask questions of the deputants sure. if you have any or seeking clarification. So I just had so one, John. one quick question, Catherine. What is it that you think in, in regard to the collection? I'm right here. Oh, in regard, <laughs> thank you for the welcome, by the way. In regard to the collection of arrears, what is it? You, what one thing do you think that the corporation could be doing and should be doing to improve the situation? Well, thanks for that question. I'm, I'm pleased to answer it. And I actually have a couple other deputations today that will, will help to clarify that. The purpose of OCH is to reduce arrears for seniors and vulnerable tenants. And the purpose and the mandate is to get in there early, at the earliest opportunity. So Toronto Community Housing's arrears collection process says that seniors and vulnerable tenants in arrears after 60 days, that those files will be referred to OCH for resolution, and she has a responsibility to resolve those arrears in 45 days. As you've just heard from a previous deputant, and you'll hear from me, what's actually happening is Toronto Community Housing is holding those files for 45 days before they get flipped to OCH, and the arrears are nearly four grand. Now, OCH has 45 days to fix that. So the whole intent is early intervention at the 60-day point, uh, look, maybe Toronto Community Housing takes 90 days, I don't know. But at some point, there has to be some sort of a timeline and expectation of when Toronto Community Housing should put those file there, files there. Uh, but it's just slipping away on us, and the arrears are spiraling out of control. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so in relation to item 2G. Well, I just want to mention that both... Yeah, Councillor Fletcher. I just have one question. I just want to clarify this. Be thank you for your written deputation. I appreciate that. That this average file time is 15 months to be referred in your deputation. Yes, their, their requirement is 60 days, but they're not flipping days. them to OCH and t uh, until 15 months. And then the average arrears is close to four grand. Yes, it is. Which then becomes very hard to pay off. So early intervention is the key. Absolutely. And you're asking us, why aren't those being flipped right. after the 60 days? And I'm going to see how many days 15 months is. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that in a minute. So if you had an opportunity. Sir, so you're that. actually slightly ahead because that's actually the deputation she yeah. hasn't given yet. Yeah. I see. <laughs> so uh, then I just want to ask you, $5,000 yeah. per household, is that to have a successful eviction? Is that for all the paralegal costs? Is that TCHC's cost for an eviction? Um, yes, I actually have the breakdown. I didn't bring it uh, that was previously provided. Uh, it includes the uh, sheriff's filing keys. It in includes the uh, um, legal department, the clerks. Uh, it includes the sheriff's office. And it also uh, includes a loss of revenue for three months as that vacant sits empty and the cost to flip the unit which is another about twenty five hundred dollars a month so it that cost when you think about it and i've said this before that cost of five thousand dollars is important and here's why if a tenant only owes us two thousand dollars does it not make sense for us to try and work out a repayment agreement 
then undertake the cost. It's gonna cost us twice as much to evict them. So keeping them housed and working with them at that early point just makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. So maybe we can now get you to give your 2G deputation, uh, if that's I, okay. I will, and, and thank you. And I actually hope some of the new board members are learning a little bit about OCH, and you'll, you'll learn here's some things through my uh, deputation. The OCH, by the way, I'm sorry, I should have said, uh, not using the acron acronym, is the Office of the Commissioner of Housing Equity. The TCH arrears collection process, as I indicated earlier, requires that seniors and vulnerable tenants in arrears files be referred to OCH within 60 days of the arrears accumulating. And in keeping with the OCH mandate is to intervene early in the arrears process to prevent them from escalating. This helps to ensure these tenants can get back on track with an affordable repayment agreement and keep their housing most importantly. TCH average uh, file referral time, as I indicated earlier, is 15 months. That is well beyond 60 days. The actual arrears uh, average at time of this referral is $3,922.29. Keeping in mind that many of our tenants are living on a fixed income, they may be seniors, for them to get into that kind of debt is going to take an awful long time for us to work out a repayment agreement. This is just wrong and it shouldn't be allowed to be continued. We are doing a great disservice to these tenants, to this board, our shareholder, and undermining the purpose of OCH. If TCH is permitted to continue on this path of late referrals, this makes TCH part of the problem. <coughs> there is no timeline for TCH to resolve arrears. Well, the arrears files for 15 months, OCH resolved 91% of them in 45 days. So it's possible. The OCH approach works and the numbers don't lie. 33% of these file referrals were from tenants reaching out, out to OCH legal clinics and social service agencies. So why does this matter to you? Because this means these tenants slipped through the cracks and may have been evicted because TCH did not identify them as a vulnerable tenant. For some of the newer members of the board, it would be helpful to give you some background on the creation of OCH. In 2010, Al Gosling, an 82-year-old senior, was evicted in a few weeks ended up in a shelter, he picked up a virus and subsequently died. He was not identified as a vulnerable tenant. There was no shortage of media coverage covering this tragedy. His death was the catalyst of change at Toronto Community Housing, which resulted in the Lesage Report, ultimately recommending the creation of an independent housing equity office to protect seniors and vulnerable tenants in a that were at risk of losing their housing. This was approved by City Council and the Board of Directors. Al Gosling should not have died in vain. It is only a matter of time before another vulnerable tenant slips through the cracks, is evicted, and dies because we failed to identify them and to protect them. Please take action before it is too late. Our seniors and our vulnerable tenants are counting on you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any, yep. any other consent deputations? Yeah. Uh, in relation to item 2H, uh, Ms. Wilkinson wanted to oh, speak in relation to that okay. item. Okay. That's the tenant survey. So I'm sorry, I, I do apologize. For those of you who don't know who the heck I am, um, I'm a former tenant director that sat on this board for 10 years. I don't know if that kind of shows, but thank you for taking that chair and giving me a break. Okay, so the tenant experience survey, it, it actually came out a couple of months ago and it went to the tenant services committee where we discussed um, some of the issues arising that uh, were the tenants uh, identified. So because our time is limited, I actually wanted to use this opportunity to share with you a recent tenant experience I had. I had static on the telephone line when using the intercom, which is used to open the front door when you have deliveries or guests. TCA sent a technician. He advised there was problems on, on the service provider's line. Once repairs were completed, he said, there you go, all fixed. Now all you need to do is buy another phone. I was 
gobsmack. I, I said, well, 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 why would I do that? I already have two phones that work just fine. He advised the TCH requirement is to disconnect the intercom from the home telephone line and connect it directly to the intercom line. He suggested tenants can buy another phone at the dollar store. <laughs> After I got over the initial shock, I, I truly was gobsmacked, it struck me how this decision would impact 110,000 tenants who depend on a working intercom system. Well, this may be the most cost effective and expedient uh, solution for Toronto community housing. It does not meet the needs of our tenants. I was expecting some delivery, so of course I, it was imperative I run out and buy another phone right away. You cannot buy a cheap phone at a dollar store. Just take note of that, people. Don't waste your time. Um, nor many other stores, apparently. The cheapest phone I could find was at Staples, and it was $17. The law says a landlord cannot reduce or remove a service without a tenant's agreement. I didn't know my service was going to be changed until it was all over. There are a couple of problems with the TCH solution. The first is that it immediately imposes a financial hardship on our tenants, many of whom may receive income only once a month, which means they would not have a working intercom until they could actually afford to buy another phone. Under the Residential Tenancies Act, it is an offence to do things that would interfere with a tenant's ability to enjoy living in their unit. It appears little consideration was given as to how this change in service would affect our tenants, particularly seniors, vulnerable tenants, and tenants with disabilities. So let me give you a scenario. If a tenant has a medical emergency in their bedroom, they can use their house phone to call 911 for help. However, when that help arrives, the tenant will not be able to admit, ac admit access to the building unless they are physically able to get to the only phone in their unit, which is typically their living room, that is connected to the intercom to open the lobby door. Even if the landlord were to provide tenants with a cheap phone, this does not resolve the issue that tenants must be physically able to get to the only phone in their unit when to open the door when they need it most. I urge you to find a solution that meets the needs of our tenants. I'm actually quite embarrassed uh, that this happened at this corporation. I would never have believed it happened unless it actually happened to me. So unfortunately, this was not a positive tenant experience, as you can imagine, and you owe me 17 bucks for a phone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so Cheryl Duggan had also indicated a uh, desire to uh, dispute on in relation to this matter. <laughs> okay, so the tenant survey. Um, I disputed about this before. Hard to hear you. Uh, okay, I'm here. Here, I moved it closer. Is that better? Thank you. Okay. Um, I sent a flurry of emails after the last Tenant Services Committee meeting, um, and they impact greatly on how this conversation is going to go because. Okay, just checking to make sure everybody's here. Um, when we're talking the contract managed buildings and the very poor performance, I'm thinking, why is it? that when you're looking at potential vendors to do work with or contract work or whatever that you bring in, you make sure they have a 70% grade off the docket or you're not even opening bids, okay? But when it comes to the, the contract managed buildings, their performance is a complete fail across the board when it comes to cleanliness of the building, condition of the building, and condition of the unit. And I'm sorry, but that's not reflective of what I would consider a tenant-focused approach to TCHC. And the closer the services are to the tenants, the more I would be promoting that you at least achieve that 70%, if not aim for an A. Like if I was, like I, can't, I, can't, I couldn't pass my first um, risk management course at U of T if I got a 41 or 45%. Thankfully, I got a 77. 
So I'm not sure why we're still waiting for contract managed buildings to perform. My guess is that the, man the buildings that are managed that are directly managed have direct access to your pockets so they don't worry so much about you know their bids. But the, the contract managed buildings, they don't have the access so they're taking the, they're taking the money and running instead of providing service anyway. Thank you very much. Uh, this is the next assistant we have listed in relation to uh, not around the consent agenda is yourself in relation to item 2i that you view as a tax credit. Okay, all right. Um, okay, procurement awards committee charter. The PAC fulfills its purpose by reviewing and approving contract awards up to 2.5 million inclusive of any change orders and exclusive of taxes with the exception of consultant contracts not directly related to capital repairs and or development projects. So what is the amount capped at for consultant contracts so that I know where to begin my negotiations when I come to you guys for work when I've done my risk management cert? Um, the second is uh, number two, the recommended, recommended award is the lowest bidder or the highest scoring proponent. You don't get the highest anything with the lowest bidder. And the composition of the PAC concerns me. There are no tenant directors or city council members listed. I understand why I'm not there. I haven't completed my risk management cert yet, so but soon. Um, and I understand quorum, unanimous, unanimous vote, and written resolution signed off by all members, but I, I, I really need to see I, I, at least a sprinkle of something other than just, you know, handshakes and across the table. Thank you. Thank you very much. So is that the... That concludes the deputants who'd indicated they wanted to speak in relation to matters on the consent agenda. Okay, so thank you everybody for those. And so board members will now turn to the consent agenda items. And does anyone want to hold any of the items? Uh, Councillor Bala. I'd like to hold item D and item F. D and F. Uh, Adele? Uh, F and G. D, sorry, F and G. And John? Item H. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? <coughs> All right, so we need a motion for the non held consent agenda items. Okay. Um, Brian and Anna, all those in favor? Aye. Okay, so we'll start with. Uh, Mr. Chair, would you just review the ones that are held just for the. D. Uh, uh, sorry, what? D, F, G, and I are held. H. F, G, sorry. H. F, G, and H. Apologies. F, G, not and I. H, not I. Okay. Correct. Sorry. Apologies. It's okay, thanks. So we'll start with D. Quick question, I'm not sure if I missed it, but on the um, uh, outs business arising from public meetings, there's a report uh, needed on the strategies uh, for vacancies and reduced arrears. Um, it says completed. Um, we did have something on the vacancy. I haven't seen anything on the reduced arrears, so I'm wondering why it says completed why it has the date of board June 27th and why we don't have anything in front of us. So if you look at yeah, it's, it's D number one in the Agenda. business arising it says report. management will bring a report to a future board meeting on targets, actions, outcomes, and strategies to reduce arrears, vacancy rates, and number of empty units. So we talked about the vacancies, right? We created the committee, yeah. but what, what what is happening with the reduced arrears? What, what where's the report? That still needs to come. That still needs to come to the board. It still needs. Yes. To yeah. So I think we we're we're made notes like yeah. Thank you very much. Is there anything else on D? I'm sorry. What will it be amended to, Mr. Well, it'll show that it's not complete with respect to the report back on reducing arrears. And should we expect it in September at the next board meeting? Yes. Okay, so we'll amend those minutes to reflect that. Okay, um, I think what we uh, F. F is next. 
So, uh, Councillor Bama. Um, I would like to have a, a motion to request a report to come from OCH and staff on a summary of all the recommendations that impacted uh, staff and or processes to be changed and how staff have responded to that in terms of action, how they're measuring, and the results. Okay, we have a seconder. Councillor Fletcher. Any further discussion on the point? Councillor Fletcher. Oh, I'm going to assume that we'll understand from that why this is according to the tenants that spoke here today, taking 15 months. I haven't worked out the number of days that is yet. Um, compared to the 60 that's required when that comes back. Would that I be right or should I ask for that separately? I we thought they're rolled in together uh, rolled myself. In together. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks okay. so much. Can Any I other see the motion just to make sure we get everything? I just don't want to be ready to have a discussion and then not have information in front of us yet again. So um, I'm going to ask, can you give us some time to draft that while we're dealing with other matters and then we can put it up as we, sure. so if we can hold this matter, we can draft yeah. something and have language identified. Yeah, so we'll come back to voting on it once we have it. Uh, anything else on F? Mm -hmm. F. My comment is similar, but it's different. The microphone, sorry. We have sorry. thousands of viewers waiting to hear you. expectations. I'm not sure the expectations are that clear as a, as a new board member and it seems to me that if um, part of the role is that TCH, TCHC makes improvements and, and I obviously I'm not seeing that and so to say that she's achieved or exceeded all expectations I, I, I question that yeah. and I, I would I think some of these are um, not outcome Right. Yeah, and they're process related. Meet meetings or whatever, and I guess as a board member, that's not what I'm interested in, in hearing. It's the results of those 60 yeah. meetings or meetings with other um, constituent groups. So I, I was just wondering if this yeah. would be. So I think when we, I can't remember whether it was the in camera or the confidential, we talked about that issue, and I think the, what we had discussed was building that into a discussion of the performance objectives. Um, for 2019 in particular. Yeah, because yeah. I, I think seeing the changes, I have to be 2020, yeah. apologies, yeah. yes. No. Oh, hello, yeah. and is welcome. This, is this on? <laughs> Hi, uh, good morning, I'm Cynthia Summers, the Commissioner of Housing Equity. Um, the only comment I wanted to make is the role of Commissioner has is similar to that of an Ombudsman different but similar and in the way that it's similar is you know the city of Toronto ombuds will make recommendations to the city it's up to the city to actually accept those recommendations and follow them so in my role I don't have a lot of control over what happens after I issue recommendations so you'll see in the performance um, plan that there isn't a lot about ultimately However, in the areas that I do have a mandate, which is preventing evictions of persons who are vulnerable <coughs> and senior who are referred to me, there's great success. So I, I just wanted to add that because I think I'm going to need water. But I wanted to add that because sometimes people will say to me, well, you've been reporting this for five years. How come you haven't solved this problem? And the challenge is, I don't even have access to the information to solve the problem and it's not, it's not the role of a hybrid ombuds to solve and make recommendations and give strategic advice. So I just wanted to comment on that. Councillor. I, I just want to make a comment. I think that's in light of that that I asked for what mm -hmm. I asked. Yeah. Some of the recommendations so we can start drilling down on mm -hmm. actually yeah. how we can assist both coach and the staff mm -hmm. to sure. Yeah, Councillor Fletcher. I, I just want to pick up again on what the ROCH has said, that this is a um, third party role and it really is up to this board when we get that information to look at what we need to do. So 
if it's way past 60 days, so many of these are way past 60 days, that's up to us to say why and ask staff it, to either say that wasn't true or yes, it is past 60 days and here's the steps that we're taking to put this person out of business. Yeah. But she's not out of business because there's too many people who are in arrears that are seniors. Any other board comments? Kevin, did you have something you wanted to add? Sorry, make sure I'm on. Uh, just to say that Cynthia and I had met, and I shared this with the uh, directors earlier, um, probably it's within the last month, it's maybe three yeah. weeks ago or something like that. Yeah. And one of the things that, that we had talked about is how to more effectively take the recommendations from Oaks and, and integrate those activities into the core activities within TCHC. Because the way that I would suggest that that OCH is being used today is a bit like a SWAT team. Yep. So it's kind of nice. SWAT team has a function and they actually achieve chief things within it, but it's you know very small and discreet set of transactions, and there's a much greater thing. So Cynthia and I have it in our plan to meet, you know, within the next month to talk further about how we can actually do that. And obviously, it starts with some of the recommendations you know that have been made. Now that's not to, that it's going to supplant. The work that the board has asked you know to come forward but i just thought i would share that with you this is already something that we're kind of taking on and because the reality is is arrears have just continued to grow over the last several years and and you know the underlying issues that are causing arrears obviously continue to grow as a result of that so so thank you we are looking to find a way to have a more institutionalized impact as opposed to a, uh, an important but idiosyncratic one Councillor, does that capture what you wanted? There were two things missing. So um, I would like that in September. So we can no, so we have at the sure. level that arrears are growing and we can like an apples to apples in September. So um, can this work back to the board in September in relation to all recommendations, obviously, that we've had? And so I want a complete summary, impact management process, the status of the implementation, and what keeps the Well, sorry, I'm listening. <laughs> the all recommendations. The word all, yep. the third word in the second line. Status all. of the implementation. Up, second line, just before recommendations. And, and as staff goes throughout, I, I want some measurements. Like, I, I want to see how we're measuring this. If the recommendation was to contact people, you know, in mm -hmm. 10 days after their arrears, how have we been doing? What's the measurement right now? What's, you know, I want, I want to see the data. Mm -hmm. Do you mind if I ask one clarifying uh, question? Do you want me to go back to 2014? Do you want the last two years? Is there a time frame? Because I certainly have this information. It's just how far back do you want me to, to look at it? Probably thousands. I mean, they might be all the same, you know. Okay, uh, that's uh, good. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think that a lot of them will be repeated. Okay. Uh, that's the feeling I have, but I would like to have everything. Oh. And to put them down. Can, can I suggest, if, you know, picking up on Cynthia's comment here and the time frame and, and you know, the thousands, I think would it be appropriate as I kind of think this through? for Cynthia to go through and kind of classify the types of recommendations, because if the same recommendation has been made a hundred times, I mean, you know, yes, that's interesting. Say it a hundred times. <coughs> okay. No, no, but it, that's different than capturing all thousand recommendations. That's all I was trying to, you know, to, to tr in, in, in fairness to Cynthia's time. Yeah, why don't we leave it to Cynthia to, to categorize and provide them to us? Is that okay? Absolutely. Perfect. Is that okay, Council? I'll, I'll get you the numbers. Yeah. I'll get you the numbers. Thank you. Show them to the chair, TSC chair, to make sure that she's captured them so when we get that, I'd like you to add that to the picture. Working with our chair. Uh, uh, it's okay. I think we can trust her to yeah. do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. she'll work with TSC to bring it back. Okay, is that all right as worded now, Councillor Bonner? Seconder? John, all those in favor? Aye. Okay. 
Okay, thank you. Um, I'd just like to thank the Oats for keeping so many seniors in their beds rather than <laughs> on the street. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I think the next poll, was it the Cordell G? Yes, Adele. Uh, when I look at the uh, two one highlights. You're going to have to use the microphone. Um, when I look at the Q1 highlights and it talks about OCH securing the 25000 in direct payments and mm -hmm. brokering repayment terms for 149000 mm -hmm. I'm not sure how that fits into the context of millions of dollars in arrears. So it was just I, a new one I'm just trying to clarify. Yeah. Well, first of all, OCH has a very small impact on the millions of dollars in arrears because in a given year, we'll work with anywhere from 360 tenants to 504. So they're not huge numbers that are being referred to the OAT. But what this information, at one point the board had said uh, that they wanted to get a sense of how much money the OAT recovers. It's not part of our mandate, but I'm happy to provide that information. So in direct payments, what that means is we worked with tenants who owed money, we were able to directly repay on the spot, you know, essentially, the TCH 25,000. What you'll find interesting, I found interesting, was that over 50% of that 25,000 is directly from family members of tenants. So one of the things that OCH does is we'll reach out to family, of course, with consent. <coughs> and oftentimes, you know, an adult son or daughter might say, oh, I didn't know my mom was in trouble, I'm paying that back. So that's an on-the-spot payment, and if you look at our annual review, you know, this is actually sort of a low quarter. We've actually recovered more. When you look at the brokered repayments, I don't want to mislead anyone. These are amounts that tenants committed to pay back to TCH. We don't actually do repayments. We broker them between TCH and the tenant. So we'll work with the tenant and then the tenant and TCH will make an agreement to a repayment. So we don't actually sign anything or involved. This is the amount in this quarter that tenants committed to pay back to TCH. The reason that I say it's a soft number is because four months down the road, someone might reach that agreement and then we need something back on track. But it's the most accurate number we can provide the board and, and the public. And, and when you say there's 360 or 504 tenants uh, that are referred to you, would you have any idea how many should be referred to you? One of the challenges that um, I've identified to the board before and I've identified to TCH is that the number of vulnerable persons being referred to the OCH is very low. If you look at the statistics of people who have vulnerabilities in social housing in general, and in particular with Toronto Housing, we should be getting more referrals of vulnerable people. And the challenge is they're not being identified as vulnerable, so they're going through the process without that extra layer of protection of the OCH. If you look at the report, you'll see that even in this quarter, 33% of the vulnerable persons who OCH worked with were not referred through the proper, proper process, were not referred through TCH. They were referred, sorry, they were referred by city councillors, by ODSP, uh, by legal clinics. And what happens is they generally, um, you'll see in Q2, here's a heads up because I just submitted that for the next meeting. Q2, we found that 50% of these people who are referred through external stakeholders are being referred after they've actually been referred to the Landlord Tenant Board and actually have an eviction order. So there is a challenge with um, the process to identify vulnerable persons and get them referred to OCH. So I would say, I know that's a long answer, but I would say that the referral rate is low given the amount of need in the community. It's not an issue with the seniors. I think there's only been one senior in the year that wasn't referred that I, I know of because it's simply a, a birth date. If they're 59, they're referred. Councillor Fletcher? I just want to clarify that 
your mandate is seniors only. No, it's seniors and vulnerable, and vulnerable. persons. Yeah, when it was vulnerable. created, it was yeah. seniors, and then Got they it. added the vulnerability Thank you. later. But regular tenancies, you don't have to. Yeah, no. John. So, Cynthia, it's safe to, I, I guess it's uh, correct to say you are not a collection agency. You're an advocate, right? Yes. And in and fact, there's been times in the past where the board has said, don't report on the money because that's not your job. But it and, goes. And vulnerable people can encompass a wide swath of residents. Absolutely. Many, many, many residents. Mm -hmm. Right, because there's, you know, it, and, and it is, does vulnerable include not just those with mental health or physical disabilities, but also those who, who struggle from, you know, from an income standpoint? The definition used by Toronto Housing is the same as that of Spider in the City, which is basically vulnerability is a condition, and the, the distance between a condition, for example, and supports. So vulnerability is very vast. In fact, one of the challenges I see in my office is invisible vulnerability. You know, the most vulnerable people are the people that don't leave their unit and you don't know if they're healthy or not. Those people can appear to be fine until they get into arrears of rent. And one of the challenges is they then go through the normal arrears process as opposed to coming to OCH. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? Kevin. Yeah, just, just in, you know, in terms of the, the question was raised in terms of are you reaching enough people? And I think, Cynthia, you said somewhere 350 to 500 files. Is it, yeah, did I catch you right on that? Last year was 504. So just, just in, in the, it's in the president's report. And we've expanded some of the metrics that, that we are reporting. But just to give you an idea that the, the total households in arrears is around 9,500. Now, some of those are arrears of 60 days or less. You know, we kind of look at, um, but if you kind of look at the dollar amount, so rent, rent and parking arrears is somewhere around, you know, and this is total portfolio, not just seniors, is around $9 million at the end of May. And there's about, be, there is, if you kind of look at how many of those arrears are 30 days or less, so that someone kind of pays a day late to 29 days late, um, and how many are in repayment agreements, that adds up to about, 4.7 million dollars. So it, it's still kind of roughly half of the total amount is in arrears. And so, you know, clearly I think there is, it ought not to be a surprise here to anyone on that there are a significant number of people that we are not getting to on a timely basis. And I think that is supported in some of the reporting of you've shared today. So I just thought I'd kind of quanti give you some quantification around that. Right. So about roughly 10% of the relevant arrears population is getting to OCH. Rough app, I mean, plus or minus, but yeah. It's, it's probably more cl closer to a third just based on the dollar amounts of right. what's in arrears yeah. payments versus what the amount is, but yeah. but it's, yes. Yeah. It, it, there's a significant gap. There's a gap. Yeah. Okay, anything else on that item? I think we're gonna, yeah. I think we'll wait, just do a, We'll do an uh, omnibus for the three, once we've dealt with all of them. We've received the report then. Yeah, yeah. And then H, I don't know who, oh, John, yeah. Right, so uh, <coughs> is, is Lindsay here, the author of the report? Yes, Lindsay's here. Ah, okay. So my question's about the, uh, the methodology I'm a big believer in, in surveys and feedback, and um, this survey, it says, it, so it, this was a, a, a paper survey that took a half an hour to complete? Yep, it was okay. a paper survey that was mailed out um, to the sample tenants. Um, it took, I would say, roughly about 30 minutes to complete. They also could um, phone in and have this survey done over the phone with Ipsos directly. Um, and they could also choose to do that in a language of their choice. How many, um, how many questions were in the survey? Uh, I think it was about four. 34. Pardon me? 34. 34 questions. Yeah. Okay. And there was a postage, you know, paid reply envelope? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So postage was inclu included with the return if they did it by paper. 
is this considered an effective way to survey or would a, would a more effective way to survey would be to make phone calls? Ipsos advised that, that this was an acceptable way to do a survey. There's a cost involved in doing um, the phone surveys as well. One thing that we're looking at for the next round of survey is to explore whether we can, uh, we can make adjustments in the length of the survey um, or in the, uh, the mechanism that we use to uh, get the survey out to tenants. It's definitely something that we're exploring for the next survey with Ipsos. Was, was the response rate considered to be good, fair, or poor? So this survey was a little bit lower than we've had in the past, but overall, in terms of working with Ipsos, they find that we're actually like in, in what they would expect to find in this type of survey in terms of both the paper and mail that we're within the standard for industry. So, so just a couple, can I make a couple of comments? Just a couple of comments. I mean, I, I would think that you would want to have, I, I would think that the personal touch would be would be better if somebody could make phone calls and that a shorter, a shorter, um, list of survey questions would be more acceptable. And I guess the other thing is, chances are people that are really satisfied might be less inclined to, to take the 30 minutes to, to reply. And so I saw, when I, when I look at the, the, I think it said something like 68 or 66 percent of the people are happy in, in management, um, in, in TCHC managed buildings as opposed to contracted buildings. That number might in fact be higher if you know, there was a, a, a wider uh, scope of surveys returned. So those are just my comments. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Fletcher. You wanted to add anything on this point? Uh, just, um, you're saying that that is the industry standard, that the industry standard, we're meeting the industry standard for response. Ipsos yes. has advised that we are within that yes. scope. Yeah. And in general, uh, skewed greatly from year to year, if you know what I mean. It wasn't 90% when we did it one way and now it's only 60. It's, it's pretty fluctuating yep. within a, a band. And the, the methodology has remained consistent, the number uh, year over year, um, and you're correct. The, the trending is, it, it's, it's not wildly different year to year. Um, the, there were uh, more, uh, more questions this year on the survey than we've had in the past, and again, it is something that we are examining in terms of making the survey shorter for, for tenants to complete. We recognize that that's something we need to look at. Okay. We really in the past delineated between the contract managed buildings and direct managed buildings in the way that you're presenting that here. Sorry, I didn't. Have, in the past, when you have reported, have you delineated so clearly between contract managed and direct managed buildings? It's very stark in the results here. We. We always collect that data. The way that it's presented year over year varies. Sometimes there's a different focus um, in how the information is presented, but we absolutely have the information year over year. So it's quite clear that there's a very big difference in satisfaction between those buildings where tenants have access directly to CCHC and those which only have access to a contracted party. In my, am I right in reading that? That's what that data is. That's showing. what that data. And do you think tenants are happier um, with a third party asking those questions than having to have like a staff person? They'd be more nervous if it was TCHC. That they're more honest when it's a third party. You know. Yes, that is that is absolutely one of the reasons why we use in our outreach to tenants we make it very clear that uh, this is not TCHC staff. That the information is anonymized and Ipsos. Um, provides that reassurance directly to tenants as well around the anonymization of the information. And that there's no way that anyone at TCHC would ever know how a tenant answered any of these questions. Nope. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else on that issue? No. Okay. So I guess we need a motion to receive uh, the rest of the hold item subject to the motion we passed on the one. Uh, John, seconded by Paula. All those in favor, aye. Approved. We passed, aye. Yeah, because yeah, we had a motion on that. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's all good. It's done. It's approved. Okay. On to item three. Um, and I guess I'll hand it over to you, Mr. President. Thank you.
Um, I will just, just in the interest of time, I will, you know, be relatively brief in my comments, but certainly open. Oh, do we have deputations? I think we have deputations. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, apologies. I apologize. Come on, 3D. That's my fault. So why don't we, we'll be doing deputations on item three. I think uh, uh, we have a list, and so we'll go through that same process now for this item. So in relation to item 3A, the first uh, listed deputant is uh, Peña Rojas. Good afternoon to everybody that's here, and God bless you all. Um, I'm Mrs. Peña Rojas. I'm a social worker, and I'm a single mom with three children, living at uh, Atkinson Co-op Housing. I'm a member from there. I just have a few points, because I know the time is, I want to respect your time. But I also want to draw taking the time to listen to my concerns that where I live right now. I want to address points that, uh, brief to the point that we are not tenants. A uh, lot of them in, in Atkinson Co-op Housing saying that I'm a tenant and I'm not. I just want to address that. But also, I uh, want to just let everybody know I'm a member of Atkinson Co-op Housing uh, right now. I just want to express a couple of things. Um, we're being bullied. We're being harassed. I could speak for myself in the meetings. Sometimes I'm not heard of my concerns. I go, I'm a social worker. I'm not working at not right now because of my disability. But I'm very, I lived in Atkinson Co-op Housing for 40 years. And um, I lived there for 40 years and I'm a very friendly, open person and I know a lot of, and I to some of them and they asked me to also come here and speak for them because they're also not very happy what's going on there. They're not listening to us, and they're doing a lot of things that are not right. Lots of uh, Atkinson members in my Atkinson Co-op housing spoke to me, and I remember one, one gentleman clearly said, um, can you go please speak for me? I don't want to go to the meetings because they never listen to me. They never let me talk. If, they, if I talk, they just tell me, okay, sit down, we'll talk later. And please speak for me and tell them that we're not happy what, the, what they're doing to us. Lots of the people, right? I even have signatures, some signatures here, or some people that even signed their name saying that they're not happy what they're doing to us. I just want to express that. Thank you. And then, um, So a lot of stuff that are not that they're not being told the truth to us. I want to express that too. Also, the lot of stuff too where I live. Uh, my rooms have crack uh, floors. I I remember last year. I'm not good with dates because uh, they uh, had to. If we respect to you, I don't want to disrespect. I had to even go number two in my bathtub. My kids peed their pants because I <laughs> called so many. Why is there? Oh, I called so many times, and it took them almost two weeks for them to fix my washroom. I have uh, I have letters from my doctors saying saying to them that they should fix my washroom or transfer me to a next unit because my housing uh, accident corp was very bad. The toilet it took so long. My kids suffered. We suffered for two weeks emotionally and everything. Uh, my my kid my son's room the floor has a crack my daughter's room the floor has a crack there's asbestos there's molds in the in the thing so they're not fixing nothing there right now we're living in a place it doesn't matter if they plan to tear down our houses in the future but we're living in a place where we're not we're not living in a healthy wise right now we're living in a place where not we're not living healthy right now I have a lot of pictures where I can get showing what all these things are going on. When you ask them to fix something, some, I have papers, proof, 
they don't come fix it right away. Sometimes I even have papers that a year. I say, like, come on, please. We want to live a healthy life. I have three children. I'm a single mom. My house is the only corp 87 dandas that have that have fences, protection fences. I've been excuse me to all. I've been raped. I've been attempted murder. My the sons attempted murder. I've been my daughter was raped by three people. My mom committed so like so many things, and these people are not helping us to be saved. There's so many things going on. I'm not, like, this is very, very sad. I don't wish no harm on nobody, but I want to say that there's a lot of things that are not going on. The few, oh, the last one before, I always, when I have, I always like doing facials, like free for my friends, like Mary Kay, and when I invite my friends and I give them my address, they said, we can't find your address. So I'm like, I have no address. We can't find where you are. They chose us to Mississauga. Where are you? Like, so also that's what I wanted to say. Thank you so much for hearing me out. I have a lot of proof. God bless you all, and thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So, uh, the, the oh, next questions. Yeah. Yeah. questions, John. So, uh, you you live in a Toronto community housing building? No, Atkinson Co-op housing. Oh, this is not a Toronto community housing no, building. No, it's not a Toronto community housing. Uh, yeah. Clarify that. This is this uh, Toronto community housing actually owns this building. It is under an arrangement. Uh, Atkinson's Co-op, you know, manages the entire building. And I, Graham, what's the, what's the what's the term we use for this sort of a, a arrangement? We don't we don't have a lot of them, but we have a few of them. So they have their own board. It's it's technically a head lease. So we have a head lease arrangement with them. They have their own board. They have their own property management arrangement. So although I sympathize with the issues, the deputation is to the wrong. No, no. So. Uh, Sorry. Sorry, I'm sorry. He had, like, can I just, ma'am? Ma I'm sorry. He, he's he's part of staff, and he's just clarifying. Oh, the to you guys. I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. No, no, no. We, I, so I did. I I did not know the ownership arrangement between Atkinson and Toronto Community Housing. And he's just clarifying. So I have another question. Okay, let me, yeah, May I just ask another question of staff? Yes, sir. So sure. uh, this is uh, not. We sorry, are actively co-op housing. Yep. There's a lot so of lies here, a lot of fraud here. I just want to ask a question of staff, because no, uh, in yeah. in regard to this. Okay. okay. Oh, and sorry. Yeah, do it yeah, after. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, John, do it after. Oh. After the deputation is done. Oh, okay. After the deputation is all done. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your deputation. Uh, I'm sorry for that. So who's we have uh, next? Sorry, any other questions? No, thank you very much. Any other questions? No. And again, thank you for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next. So um, just a reminder that the, this, this item is actually the President's April and May performance up, uh, report on uh, and an update on the CEO's business plan. So deputation should relate to the matter that's actually on the board agenda. Yeah. Uh, the next deputant is Stephen. I'm Vist sorry, Derek. Could you be clear on that? This is about item... 3A. 3A. The president's report. Yes. And so the deputation should be very focused on that. Is the, that right? The board's yeah. deputation policy provides that um, deputations are intended to further the board's understanding of the issue that's on the agenda before it. Uh, they're not a forum for questions or to engage in debate. Um, and deputants should respect the fact that the board is operating under the deputants should uh, understand that the board is operating with a heavy agenda. Uh, we now are at a dare quorum. Um, and so uh, we need to, with all due respect, we need to move Thank the you. agenda further along. We hear from the deputant which actual piece they are addressing yes. before they start. These, these individuals have all identified that they are deputing in relation to the president's report. Which section? So th That's what I'm asking. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll try and get deputies <laughs> to clarify that as they as they all the deputations. Thank you. So the next deputant is Stephen Vasilev. And, and Mr. Vasilev, you're deputing in relation to the president's report. Um, my hearing is very weak. Um, to the Board of Directors, my name is Stephen Vassler, and I'm talking about the Atkinson Housing Corporation and so the board legal the rights related. Sorry, I'm in the board's hands. The, the matter on the agenda is the President's report. Yeah. Mr. Vassler. Section of this report they are addressing here today. Very simple. Because one, right. of the, one of the well, deputations that I'm talking about. 
Um, my concern is that uh, originally uh, this housing co-op was set up to provide ownership rights to the members of I'm the sorry. cooperative. I'm sorry to interrupt. And, uh, sorry, Mr. Chair, I'm interrupting. Yes. I'm asking of this report, which is very clear, thank you, Mr. CEO, which section are they addressing? Because if somehow today they're here not addressing it, we need to find a way for to hear that. It might not be now is what I'm going to say. There might be some other way on some other agenda, but unless it's one of these specific issues, then I don't think that this is on today. So, so I think that's a fair point. Anyone, everyone kind of agree on that? If so, um, that, uh, hang on, hang on. The problem is, um, the issue you're raising isn't an agenda item for us. No, yeah, it's not, it doesn't relate to an agenda item. So I think, so what we want is, uh, what we, yeah. Okay, um, I suggest he move it to item 5A, tenant refresh, which might be more on the topic. Yeah. Yeah, that would be just a little later. So, yeah. Sure, I might suggest. Yeah, uh, hang on a sec, hang on, hang on. I might suggest that the board m might request the president and CEO in light of these deputations to consider whether it would be appropriate at a future meeting of the tenant services committee Correct. to yes. place this on, a, 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 on uh, the agenda at the discretion of the chair so I would that agree. individuals who have concerns with respect to this location might have an opportunity Absolutely. to do But I would suggest that the Atkinson Co-op is not actually a matter that's on the board's agenda today. I, I agree with you, and I think that's the best thing to do, is to give everybody a chance to address that as an issue, but it's not on our agenda directly. So well, the this thing is that... Sorry, they, I'm oh, sorry. Hang, hang on, hang on, hang on, please. It would come to a tenant services committee, and I fully support that, and I would yeah. move that. We should hear these deputations based on that particular location, okay. not the president's report. All right, we have a seconder for that. Brian, all those in favor? And, Thank and you, so deputies. here's what, so what we're going to do for, because your issue is not on our agenda today. So what we're going to do is have a, put that issue, especially on the committee, the tenant services committee, and then, you, and that, that the issue you have will be directly taken up at that committee, and you can then go, deputized at that committee at the time the issue uh, is discussed there because we're not dealing with that on issue Tuesday, today. On Tuesday at City Council, it was, it, yeah. it, the, the, the topic was about Toronto community housing with regards yeah. to the Atkinson I housing. I understand I'm that, sorry. but so this is I weak, but That's Mr. why Chair, it was a conflict of Chair, interest Mr. Yeah. for yeah. Ms. Fletcher to be a part Toronto of this community board community yeah. and therefore she needs to be not Excuse to be involved me. in this community, in this community, uh, in this board of directors, because it's a conflict of interest, and it, it you have been Excuse involved me. in a very deceitful manner for a long time. You know who I am, ma and ma I know who you are, Mr. Chair. Okay. Therefore, Look, we're trying I, to, we're trying to. Please ask so, no, the no, no, to stand no. up. No, we Sorry. have, we have, do that, okay? we have a proper process for dealing with issues. I understand. We're trying to deal with your issue in no, a proper you're way. No, all she is doing. No, 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 please. Sorry. No, Mr. she's Chair. not. Hold on, we're, hold on. we're going okay. to put this on yeah, okay. the agenda on. for a committee so it's properly raised and discussed, and you can raise your issues and okay. speak there. We're not stopping you from okay. speaking. Yeah. We're going to do it in an appropriate context. No, don't. Okay, okay, um, okay so thank you. Sorry, Mr. Chair, could you yeah. ask the deputy? We're going to vote. Just call, just yeah. I will clarify that there was an item, development item, on the Toronto and East York Community Council for Alexandra Park, Yeah. which, of course, I don't okay. have a conflict of interest. So I yes. think the deputants need to be fairly respectful. I'd like to hear them at tenant services, and I've moved that it be yes. here, and I'd like to take the vote and move on, please. Yes. There's so no more discussion here. All those in favor? Thank you. Okay. And ask them to come much. back later. No, 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 later. thank you. Thank so, you. So, uh, we, so anyone on the deputation list directly speaking to 3A, or an issue rising in 3A, or 3, yeah, 3A or 3B, the CEO business plan or operational measures report? Chair? Well, correct. Oh, okay. You're not going to No. 
Mr. Okay. Chair. Thank you very much. Thank Mr. So much. Chair. For giving us another yeah. day to I'm talk. I appreciate ask, that. Can you ask the deputants to take yes. their seats, please? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. I'm going to ask. You, here. Can you, yeah. So if you guys could, I know the three of you are related. If you could sit down, that okay. would be great. Just talk to them. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair. We're going to sit. Thank you very much. God bless you all. <laughs> thank you. Mr. Chair, yes, I'm going to ask that you ask each deputant what item directly they are speaking to in these reports in front of us prior to starting, because if they're not, then they should not be making that deputation. I'm not being harsh. I just think they're directed directly at giving us information about one item or another on this report. Yeah. Great report by the CEO. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you, yes, so I know people identified as speaking to this matter. Does anyone? Uh, I'm going, I understand that Ms. Cottle is next on the agenda and I understand she wants to speak to Ad Atkinson so we'll deal with that deputation That's separate, for yeah. services. The next deputant is Miguel Avila in relation to this matter. Miguel? Can you, sorry, sorry, again. sorry. Can first, you need you to identify. Okay, hello. What issue? Hello, Tim. Good morning. Yeah. Identify what issue yes. in yes, yes, the yes. agenda item you're addressing. I'm speaking on item 3A. And what in 3A? Uh, the president report, the board of directors, president and chief executive but officer. Okay, report. but there's a, he has, it's a okay. business plan and so operational I'm, I'm performance. I'm talking on measure. page number two. Okay, great. The report, thank you. and it talks about violence reduction program. Okay. Great, thank okay. you. Great, thank you. <laughs> so, oh my God. So, in April 29, the last board meeting, um, we talk about item 2F, the TCA report back to City Council on community safety response. It's been known through the through the through the media about an individual from TCAC who uh, happens to have a problem with the law in the states, and I'm gonna comment on his personal information. What really struck me is that, um, according to the news, is that the employee of the CSU unit is, is from the city of Whitby, Ontario. At this board committee, I remember very clearly, that's the reason I, I said I'm recording the meetings because we don't have an archive of previous meetings. Uh, I've been asking you, the city has a city, uh, a YouTube channel, and then we can have these meetings re replay over and over again in order to clarify any points of misunderstanding. So uh, my uh, tenant board directors, Amanda Coombs and Uba Farab, they encourage the members of this committee, of this board, to make the policy of hiring more residents of the city of Toronto. So this is what I'm, I'm talking about, the CSU officer who happens to live in the city of Whitby, Ontario. We need to uh, move from that practice of hiring from out of the city uh, employees and try to uh, gain more uh, staff from between our city, especially members of TCIC. A lot of residents are unemployed for that fact. Second thing I want to speak on this um, violence, violence reduction report program is that there is some good news. Uh, 220 Oak Street it has started just last month, this past Monday, June the 24th, the installation of CCTV cameras in my building. That's a request I, we made to city council in the year 2013. We request to have installed cameras on each floor. But the problem is that uh, I've been asking for questions about the project details. How many cameras are we going to be installing at uh, 220 Oak Street? So that is um, clarified to me uh, by staff management. Um, and that's all I had to say. So please, Tim, you know, please uh, enter into your list of to-do things, you know, to update our channel. Live stream is perfect, but we need to have an archive of all the previous meetings for the purpose of antenna engagement. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. And a good point, actually. Any questions? 
No, I think we're good. Thank you very much. Yeah. Next, uh, do we have anyone else on? Next, uh, deputant on this matter is Cheryl Duggan. And Ms. Duggan, pardon? So, uh, yeah, Cheryl, if you can just make sure you identify the issue. Uh, of course, of Perfect. course, I can Thank do that you. for you. Thanks. Thank Maybe you. We'll let it slide. Okay, item 3A, the May, uh, April, May 2019 performance report, the CEO's business plan update. Um, uh, under employment, employee, excuse me, engagement, you once again mentioned the TCHC Leaders Program. Um, does that request for proposal for an ap academic institution to deliver a leadership development program include any mention of tenants who may be willing to participate? If not, may I then suggest that this endeavor be canned. Your staff can afford leadership training much more than I can afford my risk management training, which currently costs cost me $800 per course plus uh, another $400, $400 for the textbooks and the course guide. So, you know, those times three and, you know, I'm in a hole $3,600 by the end of the year. So if I can afford that, your staff certainly can afford to pay for their own leader program. And I'm wondering how that would impact tenants anyway. Um, under 4.2, you began working with uh, other parking operators. Have these other parking operators requested more security cameras or surveillance parking lots before moving forward? Um, and Miguel covered your <coughs> Yeah, security issue um, and under fire light safety I know you guys are you know it's still as m again Miguel mentioned the um, archive issue for these meetings um, and I know that's a little beyond your tech range so maybe the next piece you know if you can try and squeeze it in somewhere maybe you need to hire someone to do it but I was thinking under fire life safety yeah you know, if I remember correctly, most of the fires are cooking fires and they're for a specific age group of young adult. So, you know, to me, I'm thinking, you know, maybe TCHC could create an app where it's like a little egg timer so that you're counting down to, so that the people have it in their pocket because they're all tech connected anyway. So if the youth are tech connected and, and we can reach them that way, and, and as part of that app, maybe you can include, you know, meetings and such because I can definitely use a reminder every now and again to get to these meetings. But thank you. Ms. Duggan, did thank you also you. wanted to put on 3B. I did, I certainly left. did. Okay. Okay, um, and this is 3B um, regarding operational performance. Um, uh, p pest control tr treatment numbers are up. Wow, that's really no surprise. Um, maybe instead of just um, you know calling the pest control technicians which I'm sure is costing you guys a ton of money um, personally I use diatomaceous earth it's an all-natural product it's not you know I'm not here to add like I'm not here to advocate for it yes I'm not here to sell it but um, you know it's cheaper than it is to bring in your pest control technician it works for cockroaches it works for bed bugs it's safe for people it's safe for animals so yeah we can start with that and oh, it also mentioned on their operational performance. Yes, as previously indicated, uh, TCHC is black when it comes to dealing with people who have rent arrears. Now we're seeing that the number of rental, <coughs> rentable vacant units is increasing. You do realize there's a waiting list for people in need of housing. And how long will it take to separate the arrears for rent from the arrears for parking? Thank you. Thank you very much. The last deputant we had in 3A is Shukri Abdul. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm a former tenant rep from 1025 Scarlet. So um, I have experienced a lot with uh, Toronto community housing. But today I'm coming in to advocate in particular for my community. And I wanted to address um, issues of, um, uh, there is a turnaround of CEOs within the Toronto community housing before they even get hang of um, actually operating and understanding what to do, they, they get exchanged. So we know studies show that the average CEO at least keeps a job, uh, keeps the position four to five years. But in particular, I wanted to address uh, the issue of upper management. 
So uh, there is a tenant that uh, there's issue within uh, Jane of Finch community, in particular the Driftwood and Shoreham community. There has been two um, suicide cases that happened within that community for the past year. Now, there is another tenant who's suffering from extreme mental illness, um, schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. There has been um, uh, attempts of suicide, three attempts. And the last time that she has been hospitalized, the, the, the documents and everything went to Toronto Community Housing. Now, that case was transferred to the Crisis Management and Emergency Transfer. Yet, there has nothing been done until now. The same tenant is due for a transfer for the past 10 years she has been on the wait list. Now, there's gaps, there's a lot of uh, uh, lack of transparency that's happening, and this issue has to be addressed. Otherwise, we're gonna keep losing people, and if the suicide cases do increase within that community, I don't know what else to do. We say we live in the first world countries and developed and welfare state, in terms of not social wel welfare, but we, that we care about our well-being, daily well-being. Now, this issue is extremely serious, and in particular, that family that I'm talking about is lack of accessibility, because the, the individual who's sick lives on the third floor, and does suffer from, because of the medication, uh, drowsiness, she cannot take the stairs coming up and down. Now I'm taking that as just one example, but I really wanted to address, in particular, the, uh, the people that are responsible for this. It's I'm sure some of them are here. So uh, the leaders of asset management, uh, uh, some of their responsibility say basically safety and vacancy and um, transfer list. So I don't know if this is gonna be ever answered, but we don't know who else to go to. Also, Mayor John Tory is aware of this issue. Uh, I've spoken to him personally, and uh, we sent several emails. Thank you. Thank you very much. Question? It, yeah. it looks to me, did, did you have that descript of what you just went through, the, the material? That, do you have that on your phone? Uh, some of it, just oh. to remind me, no. Do I, no, I was just gonna say, just because it's a lot to grasp in terms, and I wanna make sure that we address that, would you be willing to share that information with our general counsel so that we have a, uh, a record of it just to make sure we've got the key points that you did. And if you wouldn't mind either Absolutely. sending him an email or, or however it's convenient for you to transfer that, I think that would be helpful. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Tom, one of the uh, 3A, 3B items is Catherine Wilkinson. The, the CEOs, so first of all, it is relevant and it's actually related to the report before you. And I know you'll trust me on that. I'm talking about page four and page five. 3B, Catherine. I, I'm 3B. Okay, 3B. You done with A? Yeah? Okay. Yep. Okay, so over the past several years, um, and I can say that because I've actually had to read the reports that come to the board, um, th the information that's being reported to the board continues to be streamlined. This may actually put the board at risk of not having clear oversight of the organization. While the board is cautioned, not to weigh in on operational issues. In fact, this is exactly where audits and in investigations arise. On page four, uh, again, uh, talking about pests, I'm actually stunned that reporting on pests is now a one-liner in the CEO's report. Historically, pests have been one of the top three service requests of our tenants. One would not know that looking at this report. In order for the board to better understand the impact of pests on our tenants, perhaps the report should also identify the number of service requests and what the top three pests are that are impacting our tenants. It may also be helpful for management to reinstate, particularly as there's many new members on the board, the top 10 categories of tenant service requests so that you can have a good understanding of the current maintenance issues that our tenants face and the priorities of the organization. So I'm actually uh, making a suggestion uh, for consideration because we've talked about it a lot today and, 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 I, and I appreciate there's some work uh, in the hopper about this, but I was wondering if perhaps we should start regularly reporting out on the arrears at the board level in that president's report on a regular basis instead of it being a standalone, you know, one-off. Um, so consider um, adding a new organizational priority, improving arrears collection. 
Collecting rent enables this landlord to invest money into necessary repairs. The report should also identify the number of tenants in arrears over 60 days, over 120 days, as it used to, to help the board understand how we're managing them, not just over 30 days. We're hearing 15 months. So if the board was aware of these lengthy uh, files, we might have intervened at an earlier date. Total arrears, as we've heard, are at an all-time high, about 14.7 million, and this number has been increasing year over year. So we can't pin it to a CEO. Well, that would be difficult in any of it. We can't pin it to a board, boards that come and go. But we do have to own that the current board and management today, you own this. And ultimately, you have a couple of years to see if we can sort this out. So the numbers have been increasing year over year, and I did a quick scan of previous board reports, and arrears have increased approximately 3.3 million since 2016. This suggests more attention needs to be focused in the area and I've heard the commitment that we're going to be doing that and the board should also be made aware of any arrears write-offs that take place. Seniors in arrears, uh, 1,012 seniors in arrears, sorry on page five of the President's report, in th 1,012 seniors in arrears in April and 1,007 seniors in arrears in May. This indicates many of these files should be referred to OCH, which has a mandate to resolve arrears within 45 days. In Q1, uh, actually Adele, you raised a question on this. In Q1, OCH received 109 arrears files. And she deals only with seniors and vulnerable tenants and only if somebody sends her those files. She has no control over 9,000 tenants in arrears. So having said that, OCH received 109 arrears files, 28 were for, for vulnerable tenants, and 81 were for seniors. Now when you look at this report, there's actually 1,007 seniors in arrears. The commissioner received in Q1 109 files. So those numbers sort of tell a story about what's going on with the seniors in arrears. If Toronto Community Housing actually complied with their own arrears collection process, and sent these files to OCH at the 60-day si mark, this of course would result in a tsunami of files. And OCH, and if this was done, OCH would need to be appropriately staffed to manage this huge uh, increased volume of work. But let's, let's consider this. On the upside, imagine if sorry, we were- Sorry, sorry, we've run out of time. Last sentence, let me finish. Mm. On the upside, All imagine right. if we were able to reduce two million in arrears for seniors in a much shorter period of time. That would be a win-win for our tenants and this creation. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? No. Thank you very much. Okay. We will now deal with 3A and 3B. Okay. Thank you. I, I will start with uh, 3A. There's really three items on... We got everything? Okay. There's really three items that I wanted to speak to, uh, you know, on this report. One was the... Uh, contract property management services uh, piece, and we've been conducting audits on preventative uh, service and, and maintenance delivery. Uh, typically, you know, in past reports, these items, so long as we've actually been doing the work, we've reported it as a green item. I, I think that is a bit of a false economy, you know, relative to what we're doing. If, the, if, the, uh, if it's not achieving the outcome, i.e. that they're compliant with the service levels that they are to be compliant with, and I think it's something that we need to report on and, and speak to. So it has been identified as, as behind track. We are, I've been involved in two meetings with the um, contract management uh, companies individually on their, on their recovery plans. We are seeing uh, progress in one. We are not seeing progress in the other, so we are redoubling our efforts on the, uh, on the one that is deficient. Um, next, I'll speak to the, um, the violence reduction program. In response to the direction from, from the board and from city council, we've been working with uh, social development, finance, and administration at the city to coordinate the non-enforcement interventions and develop strategies for enhancing that. We did present our, our uh, report and recommendation at the board earlier. That, uh, that augments that activity uh, as based on our discussions with the city. And uh, so I, we expect to see uh, greater improvement in this particular area in the future. Um, and I think that, uh, <clears throat> you know, with regard to this, the use of space agreements, I just wanted to point out 
but because of the, uh, at executive committee on April 9th, there was a motion to temporarily suspend um, the renegotiation of uh, the current community leases that raise the current price in excess of the consumer price index. Some communities we actually do not have, we're not charging any amounts to as well. So this, this hold will impact the, the ability for us to deliver the business plan target. So I want to be clear on the business plan target versus the financial target. The business plan target was to have 100% of those agreements uh, refreshed and revitalized. Obviously, this delay will hold that. There is not expected to be, uh, you know, we are not expected to miss our financial plan as a result of that. We have, we have other favorable variances which will allow us to continue to meet the financial plan. That is, that is my, um, that's my uh, report on 5A. I'd be glad to answer any questions if there are any before I move to 5B. Three. Or three. Yeah. yeah. I just made new number. <laughs> Councillor Bailo. Um, I, I, I know we're, we're running really short of time, so I'm going to make it really quick. I think there's two areas that we've touched on today that over the next few months we really need to drill down um, as a board and that we ask cooperation of, of management. Mm -hmm. I asked for a report for September and we have a, a, on the arrears and we right. have uh, the, uh, the vacancies uh, being dealt with as well in a few weeks. but. Accepting that a 30% increase from May 2018 to 2019 on the vacancy rate on RGI units in one year, yeah. it's not acceptable, or all, over a 9% in arrears. Right. We need to drill down. These needs to be top priorities for management and, and this board. And, you know, it, it has peaks. We had a very targeted action. That's why we got some results a year ago. And it seems like every time, you know, we're on this every month, we, I just see, you know, a trend going up again. So I, I just need this year. Um, I know that this is very dear to you, Kevin, because when you, you were the board right. chair, this you were, we were also, you know, on these items. But um, I think on behalf of the board, we ask you to, uh, to co in, over the next few months, to come forward with these sure. reports. So we can on, Kevin, and, and Councillor right. Fletcher. I, I just... Uh, I just want to comment on the clarity on these reports and the organization of them, and I think they're fantastic, and I want to thank you for that, Kevin, because as long as they remain the same when you're reporting, then we're able to track across uh, categories, and it's extremely useful. Um, I'm just going to move two little things here, which I've given to Dara. One is on the occupancy rate, I would like to delineate the numbers because we see the full number, but how many are market and how many are RGI? We're only using percentages when we talk about that at the top. Do you know what I mean? We say the number of vacant units is X number, but how many of those are market units? How many of those? That's not in the chart. Sure, sure. I'm asking for it. Yes, and, thank and, you. You understand. And, okay. And the second one is uh, based on what the deputant said about pest control, and it is still a big issue, particularly in seniors. But I'd just like to know the total number of units that we're talking about. Okay. You know, is it 10,000 units? Is it 3,000? And then without identifying addresses, just to see how many times certain ones were treated, mm -hmm. because that is another, to me, that's a pretty big deal. So sure. I don't want it any, no, no privacy will be compromised here, but we should understand if they're casual or we have issues in, in some buildings. Sure. And is that possible to do yeah, for September? Yeah, we actually need a motion. We just minute that the board has requested that information. Well, I am moving it. Okay. If you don't mind, I've had it written out. I've pr done a good job on that. <laughs> okay, then. I think we've got it. Okay. We should honor the effort. Can, can I just... Maybe if I could, I, w I actually just went through 3A and, and wanted to stop before I went through B. Your comments and questions are on 3B, and I'm, I'm happy to take them in, but I just haven't commented on I 3B yet. I tried to yet. stop Anna, but she went ahead anyway. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, why don't we do, why don't we have the report in 3B, and then we'll come back to your motion. So, so just what I, um, you know, wanted to comment on in, in 3B and in, in, you know, when I, let me back up just a bit. Over the last year or so, there has been a reduction in the number of metrics that have been reported. That, and in fact, just to highlight how substantial that reduction is, the items in your report, and I hope everyone has a color copy, but the items in your report that are highlighted in yellow 
are the ones that were previously reported to the board. So you can see that that is a fraction of how many metrics that are, that are reported. And there were some categories that were not uh, even. Um, so what we're looking here, you know, what we're looking at, and it's, it's a bit of a balance and, you know, between um, do we inundate the board with, you know, a whole bunch of detail or do we try to get it to the, to the key elements? And I appreciate Catherine's questions because I know there are comments. And, and I take those to heart and I think that, you know, this, you know, what we were doing in this report was to kind of take a first stab at some of the things that really, you know, that, that start to indicate the services and where we are performing relative to the things that matter as a landlord and matter as, as our mandate. The, I will tell you, it is still point to point information comparison at this juncture. Our intention is, and so what I mean by that is we're comparing the current month this year with the current month last year. Eventually what, what I expect us to, to get to, and it's just a question of finding the time to pull all the data together, is that we will have month over month trending and then we'll have quarter over quarter trending, you know, so that you can see the direction. The analogy that I use is it's interesting to know that the plane is at 5,000 feet. You know, what's much more relevant to me as a pilot or a passenger in that plane is if, I, if 30 seconds ago I used to be at 10,000 feet or 30 seconds ago I used to be on the ground because one, you know, it probably has an impact on your survival rate. Um, we also, uh, you know, are looking at metrics that we think, you know, are, Im are impactful and speak to outcomes. We don't have a lot of outcomes reporting, you know, within our tools, so we're trying to find, you know, some tools and as we start to develop more and more of outcomes-based measurement, we try to divide tools that were probably indicative of what the outcomes, you know, will be. So that, that's, and it's a continuing effort. So I just want to, you know, and we will also have far more commentary on them. We spent, you know, probably the month since the last report kind of working on what the metrics would be and trying to determine between 100 metrics and six metrics where we should actually be reporting. Um, but some of the things that I thought were relevant for us to report that, that hadn't been reporting, and certainly I think the number of emergency calls is an example. I mean, I believe everything that's on this should be reported, but I think emergency calls start to give us a sense in terms of you know, do we have some spiking and particularly trends over time? I think, you know, elevators are, are clearly, you know, a, you know, a matter of concern. If I'm on the 10th floor and the elevator's not working or I've got a problem or I've got one elevator out of service in a two elevator building or the elevator out of service in a single elevator building, those have some significant impacts to, to my peaceful enjoyment of the residents. And so I think that that's important for us to, uh, to report on. Ideally, you'd get into elevator availability. We don't have the we don't have the capability to do that right now. So this is a proxy, right. you know, for that. I, I take Cheryl's comments and um, and Catherine's comments relative to uh, pest control. You know, clearly it uh, you know that that is something that wasn't reported. And again, it is one of the issues that I think in terms of the management of the organization. And I, I take your point, Paula. We can e expand on that, and, and we'll look to do that. Um, and certainly the, you know, the, the uh, vacancy numbers and, you know, the, the rentable and non-rentable, you know, units and I can, you know, in the interest of time, I won't go into a lot of detail on those now because, and we'll pick that up at the next meeting and certainly I think particularly because the vacancy management and, and vacancies generally and PCH are the subject of an upcoming special meeting in uh, July and I feel that I can speak more uh, fully to that. Couldn't agree with Catherine will know very well that, you know, arrears uh, of concern to me. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, I think I might have mentioned is Cynthia and I have talked about how we can be more effective in the learnings from OCH and integrating that back into the organization to the point I think it was Catherine made in her deputation so that we reduce the flow of activity that is going to OCH. And certainly I think that there's some areas
and, and lastly, just in terms of, I don't think we've ever reported on tenant support in, in some of the activities that we're doing in tenant support. And again, you know, as a landlord, we are not a standard landlord. We are a landlord that is to provide support, you know, to our tenants. So I think it's important that we report and get some indication. I'm not sure what it's telling me right now, you know, to be quite frank, because they're just numbers and we need to understand that a little bit more. But I think at least we bring them forward and, you know, rather than hiding. Them. And so the idea is to have, you know, much greater transparency. And, and this is not a destination. This is something that will, you know, continue to evolve over time. And so I'm happy to answer any other questions that uh, members may have. Okay, John. So is there a is there a the in, in looking at um, page four of the report under occupancy, rentable vacant units and non-rentable vacant units, the numbers are up considerably over just a year ago. Mm -hmm although there was a slight improvement of about 86 units and non-rentable vacant units. Do you have, are, are there goals, are there objectives on where those numbers should go, quantifiable numbers in terms of where you want to be at the end of 2019 or where you want to be within the next six months or how many units you're going to bring back online on a monthly basis? Right, so, so let's, uh, speaking to the, um, rentable vacancies. We have a target to be at a, a, um, a vacancy rate of 2% overall within the portfolio. We are above that target and, and you know, more so above that target in the RGI time frame. Uh, in terms of, of the growth within the rentable units year over year, um, there was a specific um, project as a result of an ombudsman report where we set aside units uh, as they came online to, and it's actually called MSAR. And Graham, just remind me, MSAR, so I've got the acronym right. Right, and, and so there's a special project that's been done on that and we are working through that list. It continues to add to the vacancy because as we put that person into a unit, the unit that they were in is vacant, was a net neutral. Yeah, the last month place so that you move vacancy rates move down through the balance of the year. Graham and I have talked about the efforts, you know, and because we are running favorable to budget, the efforts that we can still um, delve to, to drive that vacancy unit number down and, and hit it at a lower level. So that's the rentable. So, so I need to interrupt for just a sec, because we're minutes away from 12.30 and we're about to lose quorum. But then, then, John, if you're interested, I can take this off. Yeah, we have quorum now but I gather we're very seconds away from losing it. I, I know this is a complex issue, so I just wanted to make sure I yeah, was addressing no, I understand. it. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. So, but, but, so the question I've got, we can't continue without quorum. So what do we need to do in the balance of our agenda versus what can we put off to our next meeting? We have matters for information. They are item four. Uh, I've spoken with Mr. Mendez in relation to item 5A. He's expressing concern that if we don't deal with that today and get approval for the tenant engagement refresh, we put ourselves six months behind in terms of any measures that we might want to take to refresh our tenant engagement process. We have nine deputants in relation to that matter. And, and if we hear those deputants, we will not deal with this matter today and we will not address tenant engagement issues for another six months. So, so is there a way to handle it that we can kind of uh, uh, approve it to proceed subject to review at the next meeting where deputants will be permitted to come and speak to us? I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't ask. I would move approval. But thank you. I, I think, you know, just if I can, we have a whole tenants first piece that we're doing. Yeah. We have many things that are taking place, and I think any tenant engagement also needs to take that into account. So everybody certainly understands the directions here, um, and I'm not sure what the penalties are for not proceeding at this moment. Are there I any? don't know. Pardon me? Pardon me? I, I, I don't know the answer either. So, so we're kind we're of in the board's hand. At each other. Mr. Mendez is indicating that it will impact the measures that. Well, that's what I. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Mr. Mendez is indicating it'll impact the measures that he would propose to take to pursue further tenant engagement, as set out in his plan, 
if the board doesn't approve it today. We can explore the possibility of trying to arrange for the board meeting to deal with that issue in isolation, but I'm in the board's hand, I think we're, as management, we're in the board's hands as to how you want to proceed with that matter. So we could send it to the Special uh, Tenant Services Committee. I would say. Yeah, it will ultimately need, need, it has been through tenant services, it has come here having gone through that process. Um, there's nine decadents here. How many decadents were at that other board, at the committee? I would say, I would recommend, that, I would recommend that we move approval of the report and then hear the decadents. And, it, and if, if people have to leave and we lose quorum, then we'll have to reschedule those decadents. I mean, I'm happy to Well, I think the problem we have is there are two councillors who have to go to, at least one who has to go to conduct city business. So we're losing quorum now. I'm so a, I, I think I that's the problem. have a hard time with a, approving a tenant engagement system by not listening to the tenants who so, came to speak about So it. I accept your point, so we can't do that. Chair, of the tenant services, I believe. Please. All right, so I think we have no choice but to defer the matter. So we won't be, so for no, we uh, are losing quorum, so we can't consider the matter. That means we're neither approving nor disapproving. It's going to come back. We will at that point hear your deputations, so we're not putting you off. We are, I'm sorry, we are putting you off, but we're not doing anything without hearing from you. So I appreciate that you have spent the morning here, uh, and I apologize that this is the result, but um, you know, sometimes running an institution can be a little messy. So my apologies to all of you. My thank you for your patience. And uh, please do know that we have your, uh, uh, for those who have submitted a written deputation, we'll have them, but you will have the opportunity to come and, and provide a deputation yeah. in person before we consider uh, at the next opportunity you'll have notice by virtue of the agenda being published and that being on the agenda. I, I, I can't do anything about it. But I yeah. say Just so hang on a sec. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that we should look at see if we can get something we can hear this in July. So yeah. So we will, so what we'll also do is we will A, move this to the front of the agenda so we don't have the same problem again. Uh, and we will look to see if we can do it earlier than September, and we'll let you know by virtue of posting it. Uh, um. Sorry? This is the, but 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 that's that's a city that, that's a city meeting. That's uh, yeah that's that's related I gather to the Toronto uh, city city's tenants first agenda. That's not this issue. So I think we uh, uh, have to conclude having uh, I spot quorum. Thank you very much for attending. We will see you at the next meeting. As I said, we'll let you know when it's rescheduled. How are you, sir? Nice to meet you. Figure a better way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe you maybe you meet more frequently. I, I haven't yet, but I will. I've got no idea. No, some prior certain places. At some point, you just lose all the energy. <laughs> oh yes, yes, on this. Yeah, yes, right, correct. I just wanted to make a quick comment. I like the sound, and I want to know if you guys are. I want to know if you guys are roomies. Thank you. Right.